Hi, I'm Glenn. I've been living with MS for some 15 years. I retired in 2017 in the February. I'd spent 20 years working in British Gas. I'm never quite certain when I was diagnosed with MS. I think that it was February 2004. In about 2002, 2003, I was working on a project in Surrey. You'd sit outside and I'd be chatting away to people. And as I was listening, I was nodding. And every time I looked down, I'd get a sensation of pins and needles jishing up my body to my sort of belly button, um, which made nodding quite fun. And I thought nothing of it particularly um, until a couple of times when I was walking and I looked down at something on the road and nearly lost my balance and fell. There was something wrong, something was going to happen. And I think by the time you've had the lumbar puncture, you kind of know that it's something relatively serious that they're looking at. I've never had any problems really telling people about MS um, because m most of my symptoms were probably cognitive, um, which I didn't notice so much, but physically they were minor things like pins and needles or numbness or just cramps. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't have known by looking at me for years that I had MS and people were always moaning at me to slow down because I'd walk so fast. When Glyn told me he had MS, I didn't really understand what MS was. I knew the term. I'd heard that people had MS. I didn't really know much about what, what MS was, how people were affected by it. I clearly do now. A lot of the things that we take for granted or that you take for granted when you're not disabled are just deal breakers, really, when, when you are disabled. It becomes awkward to have MS um, when people have to think about whether you can do something before they can invite you. Um, even just going to somebody's house you know, for, for drinks becomes difficult because I know that I can't use their bathroom. So what do we do and how do we do it? You know, some people, it's fine. You can take a bottle with you. I think the transition of Glyn becoming less able and moving from sticks to scooter to now the, the, the chair means that uh, I need to be on hand fairly often throughout the day. So as I work, Glyn has carers in twice a day to help him get out of bed, give him breakfast and then come back in the afternoon to, to help him with some things that he needs to do. I do feel I'm more a carer now than a husband. As our relationship has grown, Glyn's MS has grown with that. My day job finishes at five, and then my other job picks up as soon as I get through the door. I'm reluctant to let MS define our relationship as much as it tries. Um, it clearly does take over on occasions, but ultimately, we both try and work hard to make sure that we continue with the relationship, even though MS is part of that. I'm sure that the lows are going to get more frequent and there's probably more low, definitely more lows to come. I'm sure I probably haven't got a clue how low it can go. Equally, there's plenty of highs. Doesn't take away from our relationship. Still friends and family out there. The Stop MS campaign is quite simple in what it aims to achieve. But the incredible thing about it is that it can achieve something that will stop MS. It's within reach to at least stop the progression for the people who get it really early on. You know, this is a, something that disables people when they're right at the heart of their career and family. You know, most people are diagnosed under 30, and it kind of brings a stop eventually to family life, to work life, and it really disrupts um, it'd be nice to stop it the other way and stop the MS. It would be such a difference.